Hi, my name is Jim Green and I'm a gunsmith. In addition to being a gunsmith, I uh, do a pretty good bit of stuff in the outdoors. I've uh, been up here in Maine the past eight, almost nine years now, and we get a lot of the frozen sunshine here in the wintertime and early spring. Even though you make plans sometimes to get out and uh, have fun in the outdoors, things don't always go as you plan. Sometimes you can get a little sidetracked. That's like Daniel Boone said one time when he was asked, did you ever get lost out in the woods? And he said, no, I never did get lost, but I was mighty bewildered for a few days. So keeping that in mind, we're going to demonstrate the Survive Firestarter fire tool out here in snow. So I'm going to uh, get me a nice spot cleared off here. I found a pretty good thicket to get most of the wind off of me. As you can probably hear, it, it was a big nor'easter here in Maine yesterday. And we got a bit of snow. I wasn't tough enough to want to come out here and demonstrate this during a blizzard, so I decided to come out in the day after. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear me a good spot out here. Just rake the snow back a little bit. Get me a nice enjoyable fire going. And being the lazy sort, I like to have me a place to sit too. So I can enjoy my fire. Now the neat thing about the Survive Fire Starter is these things are going to light and function in just about any weather conditions. So we're going to stick this one in the snow here. Not that you'd ever actually do that intentionally, but what if it ever fell out of your pocket? Or if you drop it in a creek or something? So we're going to do a couple more videos to demonstrate how darn handy these things are. For the time being, I'm going to leave it shaved in the snow right there while I go around and gather up some twigs and Kindling and tender. Now the neat thing about being in the woods like this is an abundance of firewood and it's all dry. And the good thing of it is if you use a little bit of common sense, you don't even need an axe. You want to make sure you get all your little dry limbs that are close to the ground but not on the ground. All right. That's a little bit green. We don't want the green stuff. Not yet. Good rule of thumb I like to go by as far as firewood is I'll gather as much as I think I need and then double it. Now, let's run around here and keep getting some stuff piled up. You see how I got a little bit of snow on the limb here above where I'm having my fire? I prefer not having that up there because as it warms up and the wind's blowing, it gets enough heat up there to melt that. It could fall off the limb and put my fire out. Not a good thing to have happen. All right. Yeah, I might as well be lazy and take advantage of some dry stuff that's nearby. Yeah, buddy. There's some good wood. Alright, I've gone out here to the edge of this clearing. I found some dried grass sticking up through the snow. I've got a little bundle of twigs and I got some thicker stuff here. So let's uh let's get this thing started here. Also, on the way back from the edge of the field, I stopped up there and managed to snag a little bit of birch bark off a birch tree. So we're going to use that too. So 
Birch bark's pretty awesome up here in the northeast. It's uh, better than paper ever thought about being because there's a natural oil in it. All right. Got a little bit of char cloth here in a Ziploc bag. I'll send you a couple pieces of this with each order. Pretty simple stuff. Okay. Now before I get this thing to light, I'm going to get my little tinder pile here put together. Okay, I'm going to take my finer small stuff, I'm going to pile it up down to here, get my bigger stuff working. There's a oak leaf. Well, let's see if we can get him to light too. I'm going to take some of these damp oak leaves that I kicked up here so I don't burn my hands when I get this thing to light. Oop, piece of truck off fell off there. Now mine, mine happens to be in orange. Sometimes I carry a black when I've got a couple of these. No color choice in what you can get, unfortunately. But show you how these things operate with just one hand. I'm gonna use the side of my boot to strike against it, have a good striking surface. But what you wanna do is push down on your plunger, point it right here in the center, And get her going. Fold that bundle over on itself. Sometimes it'll take you a little bit of effort if everything's wet and snowy. But, you ever get dislocated out in the backwoods and disoriented, your feet get a little cold, you fall in a creek, you get rained on or snowed on, you need to get a little bit warm. It's always handy to have one of these uh, survive fire starters in your pocket. Put 
Tell you what, a good, good warm fire out here in the snow. In the wind, you hear all the wind howling around here today. I got down in a, got down in a thicket here in the woods. Knocked some of the wind off of me. Feels pretty good. Now, once you got yourself a nice little warm fire going and you need to be found, all that green stuff I was showing you earlier that you don't want to start off with, now you can start adding some of the green stuff on here. Take some of these little old uh, spruce limbs here, knock some of the snow off of it, and lay it on there. And once that starts going, you get you a good cloud of smoke going. Stay put, and somebody will find you if you get sidetracked out in the woods here. Like I said, though, those survive fire starters, those are pretty darn good tools, pretty handy to have out here in the woods. I've been carrying one for, oh geez, probably at least 10, 12 years that I can think of, maybe longer than that. They're pretty solid. They're spring-loaded. You can operate them with one hand. Say you fall down and hurt yourself and you got a busted arm, or if you're uh, filleting a fish or something, you slice your hand, or just whatever reason you got a hand injury. It's pretty darn simple to use them with one hand. Hold them right here, pull up on that, let it snap open, and you're ready to go. Now, along with each one of these uh, fire starter tools here, it comes in a pack. The pack you're going to have a, a what they call a peeless whistle. It's a signal whistle that's a lot long, it's a lot louder and a lot stronger and carries a lot further than a you know, standard whistle that's got the little rolling P in it. You got a little tool that you can help shave some of this dry tinder bark off. And I'm going to include a little pack of this char cloth like this with each and every one of them. And the char cloth is simply nothing more than just a heavy cotton duck canvas that I've charred and burnt with no oxygen to convert that into carbon. And it's pretty good for holding a spark. You saw how I had a little bit of a difficulty getting this started at first without, you know, I've Without the char cloth, it would been a little bit rough. But uh, that char cloth makes some pretty good tender to get your spark held and get it going. And I'll send a little bit of that with each one of these uh, orders here off the, off the Gunworks website. The Survive Fire Star. It's convenient to use, safe to carry even in your pocket, always ready to use, even one-handed. Never runs out of fuel. You can start unlimited fires. Works with all types of tinder. Sparks even when wet, making it very dependable. Here's what you get. Survive fire starter, rescue whistle, combo tool with map scale, five squares of char cloth, enough for at least ten fires. Step-by-step -step instruction video, online access provided. Every hunter, camper, hiker, and wilderness enthusiasts should make this tool an essential part of their emergency supplies.